Every time a major update is released in Counter-Strike or any other Source 2 game, it's expected to contain a huge number of officially undocumented strings related to future updates or even Valve games. For example, half a year ago I managed to find orange-green weapon masks and suggested that they would be used to apply stickers to any location. So congratulations to everyone who bought stickers back then and is now making a profit on cool crafts. I personally made myself a circle out of my stickers and a rainbow. Since we received one of the biggest updates in CS2, it naturally didn't become an exception. Hey everyone, Max at the microphone again, and today I will tell you all the most interesting things I managed to find. And while you have time, check out Skins Monkey, use code GABEN and get up to a $5 bonus, select a few of your current skins, pick a new one in the same price range and exchange your old and ugly CSGO items to something new and shiny from Counter-Strike 2. Use code GABEN and buy skins much cheaper with a 30 plus 5% top up bonus. Skins Monkey, links and my code down below. Since we've already started with stickers, in addition to custom positioning and rotation, the game has one more parameter for scaling them. To be fair, all parameters besides X and Y offset were also in CSGO, but they were used a very long time ago on the first DreamHack 2013 souvenir sets. The problem is that unlike CSGO, in CS2 resizing is completely disabled, even for old stickers. In theory, since they finally added a new system for choosing the location and rotation of stickers, maybe scaling will also return in the future, or it has been completely abandoned. On the remake of the arms race map, in the room where the luggage belt controls are located. Yes, if you didn't know, you can turn them on, change the direction to jump to the upper level and turn them off. There is a small easter egg. There is a keychain with a New Zealand SS agent hanging on the key. Upon seeing this, an ordinary player will most likely say, oh cool, and forget about it in like 5 seconds. But I wouldn't be me if I didn't try to dig up something interesting. Firstly, the developers like Jackie's post with a screenshot of the keychain. Whatever that means. Secondly, many people probably don't remember this, but 7 years ago, on June 20th, 2017, in a regular CSGO update, there was a sudden mention of key chains or charms on weapons. And not just some text in the code, but a mention of six models for keychains: AK-47, Banana, Bloodhound, Grenade, Plasma Ball and Sugar Skull. Bloodhound is a reference to the Operation logo, so like the skull of some animal. And Sugar Skull is a reference to the sticker collection of the same name and the symbol of the Day of the Dead in Mexico. The mention of several compiled models means that the developers went a little further than early prototypes. The same update also included early mentions of the survival mode and many items that eventually became part of Danger Zone. So even though there haven't been any new mentions of keychains since then, the developers very often like to refine or reuse old ideas. Especially with the release of Counter-Strike 2, when they don't hesitate to add new content and update old systems like loadout or new sticker placement. And since we're talking about cosmetics, the files also contain lines for workshop tools that hint at custom skins for knives and gloves. This means that either the developers have made publishing and working on skins a bit more convenient for themselves, or in the future in the tools for publishing their own skins, the community will have new options in the drop-down menu where you can choose a specific knife or gloves. Since CSGO, this has been one of the most popular requests from the community, and if you look at the history of how skins have evolved, you can assume that Valve is tired of coming up with new ideas on their own and are delegating this task to skin makers. However, I was extremely surprised that they didn't add community graffiti in this update. There are already hundreds of interesting options in the workshop, but the developers decided to postpone them for later. Maybe similar to stickers, in the future we will see some new spray painting mechanics. The panorama interface files mention the task and map with the S2 postfix. All maps with this postfix eventually get a full remake, and considering that before the release of Counter-Strike 2, the developers bought the rights to a newbies and Tuscan for $150,000 each for CSGO. They are unlikely to forget about their investment, and we will see a full remake in the future. Speaking of remakes, as I mentioned in the previous video, FMPON has started actively working on recreating the cache map and has finally shown screenshots on the new engine. The map will be developed based on the original version in CSGO 
ago 2013. This means the best combination of a gloomy Chernobyl industrial zone with the distinctive style of new Counter-Strike and using all advanced technologies and improved graphics of Source 2. As I also mentioned in previous videos, the developers continued to abandon old systems and gradually rewrite all existing systems. In this update, they rewrote a bunch of JS scripts and ported Arms Race and Deathmatch to a new tool foundation called Pulse, which I have already talked about dozens of times before and which is a visual node-based programming similar to blueprints from Unreal Engine. Interestingly, one of these JS files mentions the VIP Escort and Escape modes. For those who don't know, both of these modes were once part of previous Counter-Strike games but were later cut. As Zul correctly noted, these particular lines may be leftover mentions from old games, but just a couple of updates ago, functions with the same name appeared. Considering that the developers have stated that they plan to experiment with new modes, maybe we'll see a reimagining of VIP or Escape in the future. At the same time, chickens receive several new animations such as bunny hop, swimming and crouching. They are currently not used and are most likely just a minor upgrade. But maybe we will get some new mechanics or game mode in the future as there have already been mentions of some kind of pets in the code. And the biggest find in this update is the new hair system. Three suspicious materials related to hair have appeared in the core pack of the engine, but they don't have the necessary textures and shaders yet. In Half-Life Alex, all hair materials use the standard VR Complex dot VFX shader, so apparently Valve developers are working on a separate PBR, possibly filament shader and hair material materials for Source 2 games, not necessarily for CS2. Most likely the CS postfix means compute shader, which means that this shader is calculated on the GPU or video card for better optimization. Based on this, hair processing material related to complex math calculations such as dynamic hair simulation, their physical interaction with the character and environment during player movement or under the influence of wind or other situations. Hair render volume, material related to volume rendering for simulating thousands of individual hairs at once without additional performance costs. Hair shading, the material needed to correctly calculate the interaction of hair with light and shadows. For example, refraction of light, soft scattering through thin hair or natural shine from the sun. In addition, there are a bunch of strings related to the rendering of individual hair strands. Their shading volume and density texture maps voxel collisions and splitting each strand into several segments. Taken together, this should look very similar to the hair technology from the Frostbite engine. It is important to mention that this is not necessarily related to CS2 and it may turn out to be a feature in any other Valve game. Surprisingly, in the same update, an interesting icon appeared with a hound eye that came out to touch the grass. This icon is used for entities in the hammer to create maps. Judging by the name, this entity is responsible for changing some behavior of the NPC. If you zoom out the icon far enough, it looks like it's not art but a full-fledged 3D render. The last time this guy appeared in an official game was in the first Half-Life, but this render looks much more detailed and a bit like the models from Half-Life Alex. Interestingly, about 9 months ago, another icon AI Goal Siege was leaked in the CS2 files, which is rumored to be related to Neon Prime and serves as a goal or some kind of point that NPCs must capture. Considering that Neon Prime, codenamed Citadel, has a direct connection to the Half-Life universe. It can be assumed that the previous entity icon with the Hound Eye also has something to do with this game. And of course, in the same update, there are mentions of two future Valve games. The first is Neon Prime. Code named Citadel, with hints at multiplayer, a game lobby in the main menu for multiple players, melee weapons, switching between single and automatic fire, weapon attachments, different battle lines like in Dota and a minimap. An HLX or Half-Life X, basically nothing new, just a mention along with some sound file. Leave a comment with monkey emoji if you watched this far and check out previous video where I talk about pretty significant anti-cheat update.